Hi, my name is Chris Brennan, and the purpose of this video is to talk about the major traditions of astrology in the West over the past four or five thousand years. So this is part of a, a series of videos that I'm doing on the history, techniques, and the philosophy of astrology. And this is sort of the third video in a series. So in the first video, I gave a definition of what astrology is. In the second video, I talked a little bit about the different branches of astrology. And in this video, I want to provide a broad overview of the major traditions of astrology over the past four or five thousand years in the Western tradition. So um, let's start at the very beginning. At the very beginning, we have um, the first and, and one of the earliest traditions of astrology in the West, which is usually referred to as Mesopotamian astrology. So Mesopotamian astrology starts uh, somewhere around 2000 BCE, so let's say about 4,000 years ago, when some astrologers started recording um, observations of correlations between celestial events or, or celestial movements and earthly events. So for example, that an eclipse would take place in the sky and then uh, the king would die, or there would be another major celestial event and then uh, there would be a war or a famine or, or something along those lines. So at this stage they were focused on what I talked about in the previous video, which is mundane astrology, which is the very first branch or application of astrology. So in the Mesopotamian tradition they started recording um, hundreds of these different uh, observations of celestial correlations with earthly events, uh, and they recorded them on tiny clay tablets written in a language or written in a script known as cuneiform. So um, eventually over many centuries astrology became increasingly more complex and they started developing additional uh, techniques and additional interpretive doctrines. So eventually, um, even though for the majority of the practice or the majority of this tradition, they primarily practiced mundane astrology, eventually by the 5th century BCE in the Mesopot Mesopotamian tradition, they developed the concept of natal astrology. Uh, from Mesopotamia, we also get the concept of the 12 sign zodiac, which is a division of the ecliptic uh, into 12 segments. So the zodiac became standardized by about the 5th century BCE, so right about the time that astrologers started using uh, natal astrology in the practice of birth charts in the 5th, 5th century BCE, they also started using the 12 sign zodiac. So this is the Mesopotamian tradition, and it continued on for a few more centuries until about the 1st century BCE is right about the end point of the Mesopotamian astrological tradition. And right about this time we see the emergence of the second tradition that I want to talk about, which is known today typically as Hellenistic astrology. So Hellenistic astrology is the uh, type of astrology that developed in the Hellenistic period based on a synthesis of the earlier Mesopotamian and Egyptian astrological traditions. Uh, with the addition of a number of new techniques and concepts and philosophical doctrines that were introduced at the same time. Uh, so I mentioned the Egyptian tradition there, and so I should briefly um, talk about the Egyptian tradition where going back to I think at least uh, 1500 BCE, they'd been using a concept known as the 36 decans or deacons. Uh, which are specific fixed stars or asterisms that eventually became associated with different uh, properties or different qualities. So at one point the Egyptians started using the decans to time religious rituals when certain decans were either rising over the eastern horizon or culminating overhead. So uh, to put it really simply, basically from the Mesopotamian tradition we get the 12 sign zodiac, and from the Egyptian tradition, we get the concept of focusing on what's known as the diurnal rotation, which is when planets rise and culminate and set each day. And this is the precursor to the concept that modern astrologers know of as the 12 houses, where you focus on where the planets are placed in a chart relative to their uh, daily rotation or relative to the diurnal rotation. So. Um, in the first century BCE, we see the emergence of this new tradition of astrology called Hellenistic astrology, 
and it's a synthesis of the earlier Mesopotamian and Egyptian astrological traditions, but there's also the introduction of a bunch of new concepts. So most of the basic concepts that we're familiar with in Western astrology today that focus on or are predicated on the fourfold system of planets, signs of the zodiac, the 12 houses, and the concept of aspects, um, most of that pretty much goes back to this period in the first century BCE where, when we see the emergence of Hellenistic astrology. So most of that system doesn't go further back prior to the first century BCE as far as we know. Um, so uh, the first century BCE is the start of the Hellenistic tradition. Uh, this tradition is practiced and in the Mediterranean region for about seven or eight hundred years until about the uh, sixth or seventh century CE. Uh, so at that point we have the fall of the Roman Empire and the decline of the Roman Empire led to a decline in the practice of astrology in Europe and West for a few centuries. Um, shortly after that, about a century or two later, we see the start of the third major tradition of Western astrology, which is known as medieval astrology. So the medie medieval astrological tradition starts um, essentially in Baghdad in the uh, mid to late 8th century CE. CE. And at this point, we see a transmission of some of the texts that were written in Greek and Latin from the previous Hellenistic tradition, and they're translated into Arabic, which became sort of the major language that astrology was being practiced in at that time, um, because most learning and science and culture and everything had shifted uh, more towards the Middle East after the fall of the Roman Empire, or at least after the fall of the Western Roman Empire. Um, so we get the practice of uh, medieval, starting, medieval astrology starting in the 8th century CE, and at this point the uh, fourfold or the four major branches of astrology um, are put fir firmly in place at this point. So the four major branches that I talked about in the last video are mundane astrology, natal astrology, electional astrology, and horary astrology questions. So even though three of those branches were already pretty prevalent in the Hellenistic tradition, it's not until about the early medieval tradition that we see the full establishment of horary astrology as a, as a fourth full branch of the tradition, even though the origins of the practice go back uh, quite a bit earlier. So medieval astrology is practiced, um, especially in the Middle East from the 8th century through uh, approximately the 12th century, and you might actually divide the medieval tradition up into two separate parts because um, the first part of the medieval tradition is this great flourishing that occurred um, with a bunch of texts that are written in Arabic between the, especially in the 8th and 9th, and to some extent the 10th centuries, especially the 8th and 9th centuries, basically, especially centered around Baghdad. Um, but then the, there is the later medieval tradition when um, there was a great revival of astrology in Europe, and a bunch of scholars from Europe flocked to Spain at one point in the 12th century during this process known as the 12th century translation movement, and they started translating a bunch of astrological texts from Arabic into Latin, and by the end of the 12th century there was this um, explosion and revival in the practice of astrology in Europe. So that's sort of, that's still the medieval tradition, but that's the later part of the medieval tradition. Um, let's see, so that's the medieval tradition. Eventually we move on to um, a later tradition, and there's not a really good name for this. Uh, I tend to call it uh, Renaissance astrology, and when I use that terminology, I'm talking about a period between, let's say, the 14th and 15th century all the way until the 17th century. So other people refer to this as late traditional astrology, um, others refer to it as early modern astrology. I prefer to, tr to refer to it as Renaissance astrology just because it's kind of centered around and reached its high point during the Renaissance and then uh, died off by the time of the 17th century or by the end of the 17th century. So in this tradition we have um, some of the first works that are written in English in astrology such as William Lilly's textbook on astrology titled Christian, Christian Astrology was written in the mid-17th century. 
Um, but by this time, there was already starting to be a decline of astrology in Europe, and it was starting to fall out of favor in academia and in intellectual society and so on and so forth. So at this point, after the 17th century, we see the decline of astrology for two or three centuries. So eventually, there was a revival of astrology after a long sort of low point, especially in the 18th and 19th centuries. In the early 20th, 20th century, there was a revival of astrology, and this marks the beginning of the final tradition that I wanted to outline here, which is what people usually refer to of as modern astrology. So we could call it modern astrology or 20, 20th century astrology. There's a few different names for it, um, but I think modern astrology is probably appropriate still for the time being. So modern astrology is initially revived, um, especially in the UK and in with uh, English-speaking astrologers like Alan Leo. Um, eventually later, there's a shift more towards psychological astrology and trying to blend astrology with depth psychology in the works of different astrologers such as Dane Rudyar. Um, in the 1960s and 70s, a lot of the younger people that were part of the counterculture movement and the hippie movement got interested in astrology and got involved in it. And astrology by that time is also sort of blended with or became merged with uh, the New Age movement in some sense. Um, yeah, and by this point, by the mid to late 20th century, astrology had seen a full revival. Um, it also became popularized through sun sign astrology, which started in the 1940s and 50s, where people could read their uh, zodiac sign or their sun sign in the horoscope columns in the newspaper or in other places. So astrology sort of re-emerged into the public consciousness through these different popularized forms of astrology, through things like sun sign astrology, but also the practice saw a revival again as well in the 20th century. So um, one of the develops that happened in the later part of the 20th century is that recently there's been a revival of interest in older traditions of astrology. And so at this point, pre-20th century traditions of astrology are usually referred to as traditional astrology. And traditional astrology, as I define it, is basically uh, the type of astrology that was practiced in the West from approximately the first century BCE, so from the Hellenistic tradition forward until about the 17th century CE. So basically, traditional astrology encompasses the Hellenistic, medieval, and Renaissance traditions, and it's usually contrasted with modern astrology because some changes had taken place in astrology after its recovery and revival in the 20th century due to things like the discovery of the outer planets, Uranus, Neptune, and Pluto, um, due to the shift towards psychological astrology and things like that, uh, but also due to the loss of texts where not that many texts survived from the earlier traditions, and so astrology was kind of reinvented anew in the 20th century to some extent. Um, and as a result of that, looks a little bit different than it did prior to uh, the 20th century. So one of the developments that hap is happening lately is we're seeing a revival of these older forms of pre-20th century astrology, and they're sort of intermingling with some of the current developments that have taken place over the course of the past century um, in modern contemporary astrology. And that's pretty much where we're at today in the early 21st century, is there's this great um, flourishing of astrology that's taking place, but there's also a number of different traditions of astrology that are suddenly available to us um, more so than at any other time in history, we have access to the texts of just about every astrological tradition going back four or 5,000 years. So that's the reason I wanted to give this, this sort of broad overview, just to give you a sort of bird's eye view of what the major astrological traditions are in the West. So I haven't talked about some of the different subsets or some of the different schools within those traditions. So for example, um, modern astrology is not monolithic, but instead there's actually a number of different types of modern astrology or a number of different schools within what I'm broadly calling modern astrology that sometimes have very different approaches. And while broadly speaking, you could still categorize them as modern astrology as being distinct or different from, let's say, Renaissance astrology or medieval astrology, um, to some extent, they're still 
distinct enough from each other that they sort of deserve to have their own categorization. So in the future, I'll talk about some of these different schools like cosmobiology and Uranian astrology and cosmo and um, psychological astrology and relocational astrology and other um, schools or approaches like that. But I'll save that for another video. Most of the other traditions could also be broken up into different schools and different subsets or different astrologers who practiced or advocated different approaches. But it's important when you're first getting a sense of what the different traditions are to look at it from a broad perspective and to group them or categorize them in this way by breaking them up into different um, eras and different centuries. And then after that, you can kind of fine tune the details by further defining some of the specific schools. So, okay, um, I think that wraps things up. So just to give one last brief overview, the major traditions that I've outlined here are one, Mesopotamian astrology, two, Hellenistic astrology, three, medieval astrology, four, Renaissance astrology, and five, modern astrology. So that makes five major astrological traditions in the West over the past 4,000 years. All right, that's it for this video. So thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.